well first off let's see if we fix the resolution issue so I'm gonna let all this warm up for a second and uh, make some adjustments and it look good So we got a lot of we have a lot to cover today in the text resources um, session day two. Let's see if we can't get to all of it in the forty five minutes ish that we have available to us. So I'm being quiet. All right, so I think this looks good. All right, so the stream looks good. I think we're ready. So yesterday we did text resources. Um, we're started to anyway. And went a little rogue, not so much as a, a pattern classically, but an approach. But I think it's so critical um, so you're going to use over and over again in your toolbox so that, and it's going to really unearth a lot of other things we want to cover so um, we dug into it and the problem we're trying to solve the problem we're trying to abstract um, which is why I do go off on a, a limb and call it a design pattern is we are trying to abstract a problem model it and then um, and then creating this both extensible and maintainable so so here we are we've got all this free text everywhere, right? It's just, and so now we're in the base actor class. But if we go over here into the command handler, we've got some more just random text. I say it's random because if you had to find it, you wouldn't know where to look. Um, so someone came to you and said, hey, I need you to change, you know, this, wherever this occurs in the site. You could do a control F on the solution, but it's kind of it's kind of hokey, and you definitely don't want to um, have every maintenance strategy start off with you know control F the entire solution. You should you should be able to say on a architectural diagram at the very least where things are happening. And so here we are again in the in the in the, uh, in the off handler. We're doing this again. We've got these strings. So the first thing we try to do was to just just get that out of there, right? So we put all that into um, a data project. So we go back over to base actor. We said, okay, what happens if we we loosely name something a repository, just like a name only for right now, and we shove all of our strings in there, and then we call that repository whenever we need one. So it's going to be centrally located, and it's going to and it's more or less going to solve our problem. And without getting into the repository pattern. Um, all we know is that we want to stick data someplace and then get it. So, <clears throat> let's look at the repository. And I've merged in some of the, the code from Smudge um, and put in just a few notes because I think it's really going to springboard us into, into the next weeks. So, before we just had a list and we're returning that back out, uh, Smudge went ahead and threw in the yield return, so he's 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 replaced what was a pretty inefficient way of getting that data with what could very easily become a full blown iterator pattern. Um, and we're not going to deep dive into this yet. We're just kind of asking you to take it on faith. Uh, same way that we previously when we did the adapter and iterator on an interpreter, we uh, just kind of touched on it lightly, and then we said, okay, we come back and deep dive into this. Same thing with the repository pattern, right? Um, so, and I started just kind of filling in some of this text. And our idea being that if we ever need to maintain any of the text that, is in, that occurs in our game, we can do so by just coming to the repository. This is the only place it should exist. So, where does that leave us? Well, we need to decide uh, two things. How to finish making this change, and then also what other design patterns, if any, we're going to encounter 
um, in addition to the repository and the iterator pattern. Do, 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 do. So I can tell you right now that one of the things that we're kind of facing when we call this is I'm doing a string format and I'm passing in a name. But in terms of an API, it's not very efficient or it's not very, it's, just, it's not very clear because I don't know how many parameters I need to pass in when I call this resource. And it could get really, really messy um, at some point for anyone using the API because they would have to either just go and look we will have to rely on documentation. There should be a safer way to make these calls. And I think the path forward for that's going to be using the template uh, design pattern. Because we've got a very, we've got a very kind of uh, expectant structure to our messages, right? We've got subjects, we've got predicates, we've got verbs, we've got all kinds of things. We can definitely um, abstract out that part of it, that problem, we're going to, uh, into a different design pattern. But first, let's take a look here. So previously, we had started off with our text resource model, which has a culture, a text resource name, and then content. And then we had text resource names here. Okay, so the problem with them being in our common project do, 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 is I needed to make a reference to common instead of our data project. Ugh. If you can't see it yet, this is going to be, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. So that means I can't make a reference to data in my common project without creating a circular reference. Does that make sense? So um, that kind of against just going upstream of our of our data pro, our data flow is we've kind of broken a rule here. So, and I think it makes more sense if we've got our uh, text resource repository here instead of our localization domain. Why don't we just add a folder and call it model? I think that makes more sense. I think that we've got we've got this representation of data. It should be in the data project. And by doing so, then we can adjust the flow of this stuff appropriately and get rid of this, this danger of having a circular reference. So let me come here, do this auto magic refactoring. And then do, 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 do. text resource name. A little more automatic. And then I'm going to delete these two things out. Okay. So goodbye to this. That looks good. And close these two away. Oops. And one more little broken reference. Clean, 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 clean. Oh, I'm just going to delete this and let this guy do it for me. Cool. Okay, so quick refactor. Let me go ahead and close out all this stuff except for base actor. I'm gonna earn myself a chat break. All right, so Smudge says, just to clarify, design patterns come in two forms. There are the cornerstone object-oriented design patterns that define the 24 creational, behavioral, and structural patterns. Um, a software design pattern is generally though is simply a reusable solution to a given complex problem and there are probably thousands of them. I love that. Absolutely love it. I'm going to copy that and put it someplace. Um, 
It's actually, it's, it's, it's great, right? So, so yeah, eloquently put, I couldn't say it better. All right, so. Tonight we're going to clean up the base actor, and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have one of those great coming together moments. I think I can feel it already. We're going to clean this up, and then once we've cleaned it up, we're going to be able to finally see uh, how to really optimize our execute action call. Because right now this is really messy. We're doing a lot of stuff, and it just it just isn't really smart. Um, it's. I want to be I want to be a little a little better in my code than having to extend really uh, repetitive case statements. Previously, we used dictionaries to solve this problem. We've used design patterns, and so we're just going to do the same thing again here. So, for fight, do I already have that? Let's go back to the repository. Base actor fight. For the room message, that guy. And the player message. Oh, actually, I just I did it before, and I actually copied it twice, so that's embarrassing. All right, heal. There we go. this guy down for a fight. Fight room message. Alright. I can see some floodings in chat, but I'm I'm staying good to my promise that I'm gonna only take breaks and check it every so often. Uh, so let's let's just do heal, and then we'll run things and see if we broke anything. Okay. Still build. Start. I got a connection to our server. If I uh, do old reliable Gary. Okay. So I get the message, welcome back Gary. I'm in my room. Let's go ahead and open up another session for, for Beth. Because I don't think we really gave the game a spin last time. That's always, I mean, maybe we did, but not, you know. Now we have a game we can play. It's just, I mean, we just kind of want to keep playing it, right? That's, um, oop, brain fart. If anyone, out there if anyone out there considers fart to be a bad word, let me know. I apologize. Try to keep it a, try to keep it clean. But brain fart's such a, just a thing, right? Okay. So I'm debugging one session. I got one session just open. And so Gary's logged in, right? Gary can do things. Gary can fight Carl. Or Gary can fight Carl when there's not a bug in the system. Urgh. Gary got nothing back when he fought Carl. Oh, bug, bug, bug. All right, hang on. Let's see why that is. It might just be the multiplayer stuff.
Yeah, looks like it's the multiplayer stuff. Um, let's see if we can still test it with two players. Okay, cool. So there is a bug in the when one person's logged in and the other person's not. But you can see here that um, when I log in as Beth, it says, Welcome back, Beth. But it knows that I'm in the same room as Beth. And so it says Beth enters the game. Pretty cool so far. If I um, inspect Carl, all right, so I, I can see Carl's hit points. And then I want to fight Carl. Ooh, something's still wonky with the fight. We'll have to fix that. Yeah, fight is throwing some weirdness. Okay. Let's go ahead and fix this up, and then we can see what's happening over there. Do, 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 do. Alright, so do I repair? But all the messages that we saw are coming from our text resource repository. and do negotiate as well. Alright, so that was that wasn't too bad. I think we've hit the main ones. We've got welcome messages. We've got negotiate. We got repair, heal, fight. Not a stamina, cannot. Right, so we're doing we're doing good things. I got two minutes so I can check chat again. It's like teasing myself with a treat. We are social creatures. There's a, there's a burning need to interact. All right, negotiate, repair. Okay. So, without the, now, now that we can actually see this thing kind of normalized, we're doing the exact same thing here. It wasn't always that way, but through just poking at it and doing the right thing over and over again, certainly we could replace all this code with something that is a little smarter. And we'll get that in a second. So, just to recap, we've got our repository, so it's going to be a pattern for the future. We've got this iterator pattern, thanks to, um, to Smudge. And we're trying to solve the problem of our text resources being in, in wildly different places. Yeah. So up here we've got repair room message, repair player message. And then, so that's, and then on the receive action result, um, we're generating our target information. And we have our target message. So we can go ahead and copy that over. It was the missing piece. Oh my goodness. I can check chat again. Whoa. What was I doing there? Repair. Negotiate. And heal.
All right, check in chat. Oh, Smudge says, I expect you missed it, but I did a trial run of a code review stream a couple hours ago. Work through one of Dan G's solutions. Mudsy is on my list. Rock on. That's con ah, yeah, absolutely. I got it. Is it recorded? Tell me it's recorded. Hang on, I'll keep reading. What am I doing? What? I didn't change the title. Hang on. Changing the title of this of this of this of the stream. Uh, so Smudge in chat was just saying that he did a kind of a peer review stream, which I think is awesome, awesome, awesome. We were talking offline briefly about um, how these code bases could be pretty neat. Um, Uh, pretty neat kind of functional examples right like and just just good approaches without having too much too much clutter right so when I come in here and I see this iterative pattern this is just a really good approach I'll tell you that I you know this is a, this is actually I had to do my homework on this and make sure I understood it because I, I didn't use it I don't use it I, I just rely on you know sending more trains if you're not familiar with that expression it's this idea that you can solve uh, problems of of core inefficiency by throwing more resources at the problem. So in our in our world of you know quad core and and, and uh, processors and like 32 gigs of RAM, we don't always in our line of business applications or I do in web applications don't always run into um, the 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 self checks we should right so. If you're doing really, really low-level programming, it kind of forces you to be a better, a better coder, and we're seeing a little loftier. So sometimes you can get away with some, some pretty, some pretty poopy stuff. Anywho, so Smudge has been great about, um, about reviewing and making those changes, uh, implementing comparators. Uh, making sure that things are spelled correctly, making sure things that, that the coding is clean. Um, so that if anybody comes along and looks at it, they're like, oh yeah, okay, that's how I do that. Fight target message. And we got like four more minutes before I can, take, before I can check chat again. That is torture, torture. It's like having a timer on the cookie jar. All right, so this is all. This all looks good. Oh, process item. We got a different one. All right, so let's go over here. We missed this guy. Let's call it get. Eh, I'll say get item. But I guess technically you could try to get anything. Go over to our resource names. And I guess in theory, all these should have a fail message as well. Like if you fail to do something. But we don't really have the logic in the game yet, but I, I can definitely, I'm starting to think of. Maybe that would be a thing. Let's come back over here and keep cleaning. So 
far so good. Okay, so this all looks much cleaner. Not enough stamina. Alright, we should have made a message for that. Yeah, not enough stamina. Look at that. Play the message and not enough stamina uh, room message. Cool. Do 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 do. All right. Before we move into how to optimize this and in doing so, um, kind of wrap up our text resource. At least that that kind of. This is, this is the approach, right? This is what we want to do. We want to be able to give ourselves a way to um, centralize our string resources in an application. Well, we got a little bug in there. We want to, we want to kind of see what's happening, particularly on fight. So, let's just play it. Okay, so Gary, welcome back Gary, looks good so far, get test hammer, yeah, something here is getting wonky, so let's get back and let's go into the render strategy. So our render strategy, it's a, it's a, it's a strategy design pattern that we've got hanging off the end of our easy TCP project um, and so let's just see what happens when a game response comes back from the server so look around if room call okay is null display action items yeah so somewhere in this things get crazy So I log in. We know that works. So I have a new player instance because I log in successfully. I draw my room in my status bar. And I exit back out. Okay. So then what happens when I type fight Carl? It goes off to the server. And then we come back. Oh. Adios. Adios mio. Okay, so we got a problem someplace else. Let's go into our core and our command handler. So we're here. I will check chat in a minute. It's so exciting. Oh wait, blurred. Where did I? Oh yeah, I put it inside a fight. Whoa. Okay. So. I'm going to hit my debug point instead of fight. I'm coming in here. I am not exhausted or disabled. I have enough stamina. I calculate the amount that I want to fight for. I say that I was successful. Alright, so here's where we could go crazy. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
And I'm also not displaying this guy. So there's another place I need to put my text resource in action. And I know the same key has already been added. So I just have a, a goofy something or other in my repository probably. Look at that. Jumps out right at you. Anything else? All right, I'm check chat before I do that again. Ah, Smudge says that if I do Control Alt E and I get the debug exception settings, I can automatically break when exception is thrown. Okay, so. So, um, so the most embarrassing part about that, and I, I thank you so much. The most embarrassing part about that for me is that is a, a is um uh, is a topic, um, and part of the study material for the Microsoft uh, uh, certification. So I should know better. Anyhow, uh, let's see what let's see if that gets us where we need to be. Gary, yes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remove debug points because I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a smudge suggestion here in a second. All right, Carl. Let's remove that guy. Oh, success. So it's nice one con All right, so I attack Carl for eight damage. I'm cheating. I'm gonna reach out because I, ah, uh, I'm break. I've broken down. I'm eating a cookie. Um, Smudge says I'm not MS certified. Um, no offense to those that do get certified. I hold little value in them. I'm not going to make. I'm not going to, I don't know, because I'm on camera, so it's hard. But um, I will say this. The uh, one of the, the school that I'm going to, because I'm kind of going back and getting my master's and such, right? And they give credit for the uh, Microsoft certifications. And so I do, I wonder if I would do it if that wasn't the case. So take that for what it, what you will. And now for realsies, for reals and sins, I'm not going to check the chat for another five minutes. All right, let's let's go back over to the uh, multiplayer and see if that, how far that gets us. Because we want to make sure our text resources do what they're supposed to. So I'm going to log in as Beth. Boom. So I get on this screen, Beth enters the game. Over here, welcome back, Beth. So... And now, now we're also gonna, we're testing a lot of things here. We don't have any test cases or anything, and it's a bit to take on. But um, we've got a lot of patterns going on, right? So t we should have a singleton for our hive mind. And so if I just did eight damage to Carl, yeah, he's got ninety-two damage. Ooh, over here I'm getting a line where my 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 client is processing um, a blank line. That's fine. All right, so what happens when I fight Carl from this screen? Awesome. So you attack Carl for 21 damage, and then over here, Beth attacks Carl for 21 damage. All right, what happens when I inspect Carl from over here? I get, I get Carl's new health. So it's, it's, starting to look, it's starting to look like a game we can play. So I'm going to do get test hammer from over here. You take test hammer, put the hide it away. Gary takes test hammer and quickly hides it away. 